we're another year older and wiser. Sure. And we read some really good books this year. That part I wholeheartedly agree with. Hi readers, welcome back to Six Picks. I'm Emma. And I'm Abby. And today we are talking about six of our picks for the best books of 2018. These are the books we absolutely loved that we read this year. Now, of course, it's not all the books we read this year. We're reading constantly. But these are the books we're still thinking about in December. My first pick is The Incendiaries by Aro Kwan. This novel centers on Phoebe and Will. They meet at an elite college. Phoebe is still reeling from the death of her mother, for which she feels very responsible, and Will has just transferred to the school from a Bible college and is waiting tables to make ends meet. These two form a relationship and they meet another man, John Leal, and the three of them sort of form a triangle. John is very charismatic and sort of brings Phoebe and Will into his group. I won't spoil anything for you, but this book is a great look at the human condition, at what it means to be young and devoted to something. My first pick is Meaty by Samantha Irby, which is a little bit of a cheat because these um, essays were already published in 2013 and this is a revised and expanded update of that collection. But I'm just willing to make that little cheat because I love Samantha Irby's voice so much. These essays are, in terms of tone, very in keeping with her blog, Bitches Gotta Eat, mm -hmm. a hilarious blog that I highly recommend. But she also doesn't hold back in terms of really getting deep into personal stories and um, stories about her childhood, her relationship with her mother, uh, her health issues, and then intermixed with all of those heavy topics, it's her signature style and all of the hilarious mishaps that befall a young person who's trying to make their way in the world and figure out who they want to be. My second pick is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshvag. This unnamed character at the center of this book is suffering from a lot of depression and grief from the death of both of her parents. So she meets a doctor who will prescribe her anything and she has a cocktail of drugs like Ambien that essentially put her to sleep for nearly a year. She barely leaves her apartment. In New York, everything can be delivered and she really checks out from society in order to just deal. So I really loved this book. Otessa Moshvag has a very dark and funny writing style, and I really grew to love this character, even though she's quite prickly. My second pick is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang, and this book is definitely one of the cutest books I read this year. It's a little bit of a departure for me because it's not hideously depressing. I'm so proud of you. I know. Well, I did cry during part of it, but okay. you know, I was just experiencing a wide array of emotions. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very uh, sweet romantic comedy that has kind of a twist to it. So the protagonist, Stella, is a very smart, very competent young woman who is on the spectrum and she is looking for um, some of the things that come with a romantic relationship without the emotional baggage of a romantic relationship. Aren't we all? Yeah, I know. And it's um, almost a mashup of kind of the rosy project and Pretty Woman, like a gender swapped Pretty Woman. I love it. It's very cute. It's got tons of great romantic comedy tropes. It's um, kind of spicy. And I think it's a great way to kind of dip your toe into the romance space, especially if you are not a regular romance reader. It's a nice crossover title. My third pick is The Great Believers by Rebecca Mackay. And if there's one book that I have been literally pushing into people's hands and saying, read this, it's this book. So this is a dual narrative. One part takes place in 1985 in Chicago when our main character, Yale Tishman, is watching his friends drop dead from the AIDS crisis. 
One of these friends is Nico, and we also meet Fiona, who's Nico's little sister. And she sort of gets involved in Yale's friend group, and together they grieve the death of her brother and his friend. Now we flash forward to present day, when Fiona is in Paris, and she's looking for her estranged daughter. Now, it might not make sense as I describe it here, but I promise these two tales are braided together in a way that will absolutely stop your heart, make you cry, and make you hug this book to your chest. My final pick is Circe by Madeline Miller. Um, I love Madeline's work, and this book has just about everything I like in a story. It's a sweeping, centuries-long adventure. There's romance, there's intrigue, there are witches. Really, what else is there? <laughs> yeah, what else could you need? Um, like Madeline's earlier work, this is a retelling of a classic tale from Greek mythology. I think of it as like Rick Riordan for grown-ups. Oh. Not that Rick Riordan can't be for grown-ups, you know I love those books too. If you like a retelling of a mythological story but with a modern sensibility, this is definitely the book for you. Well, there you have it readers. Those are some of our favorite books we read in 2018. Thank you so much for reading along with us this year. And if you have a book that you read in 2018 that you can't believe we didn't mention, let us know in comments below or tweet at us at Read It Forward. And if you want more book recommendations, well, we have a lot of ways for you to get them. You can go sign up for our weekly newsletter at readitforward.com slash subscribe. Or if you want to hear our voices but not see our faces, <laughs> we have a podcast that's recommending great books all the time. You can find us at readitforward.com slash podcast or on any of your podcast apps.